Hey guys, um, this is my third video. I had a lot of people request um, brows, so I did them how I usually do them. I just kind of follow my natural shape, and a lot of times my tails are not really there, or I'll pluck them off because I just, the older you get, the more you lose your tails. But this is how I do it. Um, hopefully, it helps some people out there. I just did a um, kind of basic, obviously. No. Um, I went for a more glam, sparkly, kind of sparkle tears look. So, if you want to see how I got um, the eye makeup and how I do my brows, just stay tuned. Thanks. I'm starting off with a small angle brush. This one is by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I'm using the BH Studio Pro Ultimate Brow Palette. I like using the cream to start making the inner part of my brow more defined. I'm taking the angle brush and tracing right under my brow to start my shape. I then use the brush to make some tiny brush strokes that simulate hair. This helps achieve a more natural look, especially up close. A little product here goes a long way. I mostly drag the color up into my brows to fill out any sparse areas where I'm missing hair. I try to go back and forth on the same areas of each of my brows to keep them as evenly as possible. Just try to follow your natural shape here the best that you can. Most of our brows are not shaped the same. I've noticed the tails of my eyebrows are falling out the older I get. So that's the hardest part. Also, my eyebrows are not shaped the same. A lot of people's are definitely not shaped the same. They're definitely more like sisters than twins. And now I'm seeing how hilariously off I am. The struggle is real. I'm not too concerned if I rub my makeup away at this point because I'm going to correct any mistakes with concealer. I like to go over my ends with a dark brown powder from the same palette just to help set them and keep them from smudging. I also make a little more strokes to simulate hair growth to look a little more natural. A lot of times I feel like Groucho marks when I do my eyebrows before I do my eye makeup so I definitely make a lot of brow gestures and weird faces. And you're very welcome for that. That's just, that's just a bonus. And three and a half hours later, we actually have brows. So we are good to go. Now I'm going in with a flat concealer brush and taking my Born This Way concealer in the shade Very Fair and fixing any mistakes that I've made, which, I mean, come on, rarely happens. This also helps define your brows a little bit and give you those nice Instagram brows. 
I don't always do this step, but when I mess up a lot, I kind of have to. You kind of have to be careful with this step because it is very easy to um, do what I just did and flick your eyebrow way out like a maniac. So watch yourself. For this eye look, I'm starting with a fluffy dome brush and applying a transition color. This is Boulon Fresco, I believe is what it is, from the Modern Renaissance palette. I'm placing this in the crease and buffing it out to diffuse the color. This helps make our darker eyeshadows more blendable. Now I'm using an eye shading brush. This one is the Sigma E55 and I'm applying the color Love Letter from the Modern Renaissance palette. This is a very bold pink color, but I really love it. It's very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. It's way better to start with a smaller amount and build up the intensity that you want rather than to try and go back. I'm dragging this inward to help make a gradation of color. Obviously repeat on your other eye, or not, just live your life, do your thing. Here I'm taking a Real Technique shading brush and using my Lime Crime Venus palette and I'm taking a little bit of shell and rebirth on the outer part of my lid. It's also a very bright pink but the contrast of colors I think is very nice. I then decided I wanted a little mini cut crease with some glitter, so I'm going back in with my concealer on a small detail brush and sketching out on my lid where I want the crease to start and just blending that in with the color on my lid. I'm also bringing it down into my tear duct area. Now I'm taking a pencil brush. This is the E30 by Sigma, I believe, and bringing that color Love Letter under my eye. I'm leaving a small gap in the middle of my lash line because this is where we will apply our glittery tears. 
Also, you have to bug your eyes way out just like this. It's the scientific way. I applied some glitter glue with a Q-tip where I was going to apply the actual glitter. I'm tapping it down my face for where I want my glitter to come down. I'm using Jazzy Glitter in Ravishing. It's so pretty. It has different size pieces of glitter and has a pink iridescence to it. But be so careful when applying any glitter around your eye. You do not want to deal with the pain of having a piece of glitter in your eye. So you use caution when applying this. I'm adding it with my finger in small bits at a time. I keep glancing over at my monitor to see if it's as awesome as it looks in the mirror. It is. Then I applied a little bit to my inner lid using a Q-tip where I had sketched out my half cut crease. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part, highlight. I am currently in love with this stuff. It's the Baked Highlighter in Bella Rose by J-Cat. It's beautiful and has a soft pink hue, which I think looks great in just about any light. I apply it to the tip of my nose, my cheeks, and my cupid's bow. I decided I wanted to make my lashes a little darker, but I didn't really want to take away from the glitter, so I made a thin line on my upper lid using the NYX gel liner and an angle brush. I just kind of drug it across to make it look like my lashes were thicker than they are. At this point, you're gonna wanna throw on some mascara. I'm going with my all-time favorite, the Clump Crusher Mascara, and you can get this at a drugstore, so it is amazeballs. Go ahead and make an awkward amount of eye contact because why not? That's just, that's it. Think about dinner while you wait for your lash glue to dry. These are the Tinkerbell Lashes by House of Lashes and they're very beautiful. They're super comfortable. I like applying my lashes with this little clamp tool from Japanesque. It just really makes applying lashes a lot easier and you can kind of clamp your lashes to the false lashes and make them more flush. And it just, you know, it makes my, my life a lot easier. So anything that does that is, is gonna be a crucial tool in my makeup kit. Go ahead and do a stupid little, okay, okay, because you got it right the first time. Didn't have to redo those. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch these little works of love of mine. Please subscribe if you liked what you saw, and I will see you guys next time. guys have any ideas for some cool Halloween looks that you'd like to see um, leave me a comment or shoot me a message because I have some really cool stuff coming up and I'm gonna try my hardest to do a 31 days of Halloween tutorials which may kill me but I'm really you know into Halloween so this sounds like a lot of fun but I'm gonna go wash my makeup off because it is like uh, 11 o'clock at night and I have nowhere to go so yeah thanks for watching